Hey, this is the one-man gold mine, the one-man enterprise of professional wrestling and all entertainment, Flynn Hendricks. And you better believe when I'm looking for a good podcast to listen to, I go to my own. I go to the I Know You Hear Me podcast hosted by me, Flynn Hendricks. That is such a fresh perspective for how you should look at life, too. Like, I just, I love that. And then when I'm feeling spooky, I go to my other podcast, Tales from the Haunt, where myself, I want my head shoved inside a 15-pound silicone mask more. You know, I want to have a bucket of sweat coming off me at the end of the night. And just Jeff. Dogs don't lay eggs, please. (laughs) I hate you so much. Talk to other scare actors about what it takes to get into the world of scare acting. So if you're curious about how people became professional wrestlers, actors, prioritized their mental health, became entrepreneurs, avoided burnout, or got into scare acting, you need to go check out I Know You Hear Me and Tales from the Haunt, available on all podcasting platforms. And I know you hear me. Welcome, everybody, to the PWZ Podcast. I have a very special guest today at the 17-year-old veteran, gorgeous Greg Baylor. What is going on, my friend? Well, now I'm actually the 18-year-old veteran, so oh, now I missed it. things are getting serious. That extra year, I mean, I've advanced so much, and you're right. It definitely is a special, special interview, that's for sure. But I'm that's doing right. It. So I want to know, um, how did you get interested in this sport of professional wrestling? That's always my favorite question about how people discover it, because it's uh, to me, professional wrestling is a very special thing. You know? Right, yeah. I mean, I was introduced at a young age. Um, I was hanging out with my dad, and he was flipping through channels, and he said, hey, Greg, why don't you check this out? And it was uh, it was Monday Night Raw, and I just I was hooked ever since. And when I turned 16... Uh, sometime in 2021, I decided I wanted to live out the dream and actually put one foot in front of the other and start doing it. And I met Paul Roman, Mario Mancini, some of the two best people to ever step into my life, and they helped me so much. How did you uh, discover uh, Paradise Alley, uh, Mario and Roma? Yeah, uh, just through online, through looking at wrestling schools, and um, it was close. Because I, uh, I got a place in Fairfield, and it's a 30-minute drive. So it's definitely uh, easy to get up and down. 30 minutes is not too bad at all. And, I mean, I think Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling School has got to be the best training school in at least all the Northeast. So um, I think it's definitely uh, definitely up there. There's a lot of uh, – they've produced a lot of great professional wrestlers over the last uh, – during their existence, we'll say. Definitely, definitely. they got some of the best trainers there. Yeah. Um, what was your initial reaction to, uh, I mean, initial uh, impression of uh, Roma and Mancini? Well, I'll always, I'll always remember the first day I was there. It was a Saturday morning. It was just me, my father, Roma, and a couple other students at the time. And it was my very first day introduced to pro wrestling, teaching me the, the, the basics, running the ropes and everything. And Roma, he, I felt like I just learned so much in just that one day of uh, being there for, for my first day. Um, so as far as impressions go, as soon as I met both of them, I knew that these people were going to take me to uh, new heights in my career. Nice. Um, let's talk about your debut match. I'm trying to remember. I tried to look through um, all the videos that I've shot. Uh, obviously, anybody knows me, then I'm always over there with my camera recording shows at Paradise Alley. I'm trying to remember exactly which one it was. I was trying to look through my uh, video files. Yeah, it was uh, It was Black Friday. It was no, I believe it was November 26th, and it was a four-way elimination match it was myself dustin waller lorenzo vendetta and i believe cody perrin okay and i was not the first person eliminated so it was it was an okay debut and it was for the alley fights championship so <laughs> i do remember that okay i was trying to remember that uh um what was important how did you discover like um what was your favorite part of like 
uh, I know I'm going a little bit backwards, sorry, but uh, growing up watching professional wrestling, because obviously you're very good on the microphone. Uh, and that is a very important part of uh, the business of professional wrestling, being able to speak. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, from a young age, I was always a big fan of The Miz. Okay. Uh, I I related to him in a way because there's people that boo The Miz. Mm -hmm. And there's no good reason why you should boo him. I mean, he's absolutely amazing. Everything, everything he does is perfect. Yet they boo him. And I've always wondered, well, why is it? Why do they boo The Miz? Because I'm sitting in Fairfield, Connecticut in my very nice house, my king-size bed. And I'm just looking over at my dad. I'm like, why do they boo him? And we both came to the agreement that it's mainly because all those wrestling fans hate him because they ain't him. They don't have the money. They don't have the luxury. They don't have the woman he's got. They don't got anything. And that's why they boo him. So that from a young age, I, I was definitely attached to the Miz in that way because I related to him in that sense that people are going to hate on me just because they can't be me. And I see that a lot today in wrestling. All right. I'm going to go over some moments of your career. I might bring up stuff that uh, might be a little uncomfortable bringing uh, answering, but I want to get down to uh, your opinion on some things. All okay. Right. All right. Uh, not necessarily this next question, but you were peered up uh, pretty early on with uh, fly nine Noriega. Right. 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 With um, you came in um, and, Tell us about, you worked with uh, Mark Alexander and Mills Hendricks in a match. Uh, two really bright up-and-comers. Uh, what was your opinion of uh, that match and those guys? Well, it was, I believe it was supposed to be Mark Alexander and Mills Hendricks. It ended up just being, Mark Alexander actually got hurt. Okay. Remember, okay. it was Fly Nye and myself versus Mills Hendricks. And for a while, Fly Nye and I, I mean, I, 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 I was, you know, paying him to help me as far as wrestling goes, take care of guys like Sunset Steve and all that. Oh, we're going to get into that as well. Yeah. And at first it, it, it was a good thing. It was going well. And I think, I think Fly Nye just got greedy. I think it got to his head. I think he wanted the spotlight uh, that I had and he knew he could never be me. He could never look like me, never walk like me or talk like me. I was always just cat Every, everywhere I go. I just steal the show and he didn't like that. He wanted to be that guy, and he couldn't be that guy with me, with him standing in my shadow. So then things got a little difficult, but that's about it. I brought this up with Fly and I in the past, but, you know, you guys went into to, to Garcia's uh, house, you know what I mean, and attacked him and stole his shoes. You stole his shoes. What's up with that? Well, Fly and I stole his shoes. I don't need those uh those things that Sunset Steve calls shoes, those things look like they just came out of the sewer. I, you know, um, not really my style, put it that way. But yeah, uh, Fly Knight, like I said, I think he's a little greedy. I think he, uh, we went in there to do our thing, confront Steve, and Fly Knight wanted a new pair of shoes. I don't know what else to say. I think he- Did you uh, make sure the, the, that the, the check's cleared, at least? Check's always cleared. Don't worry okay. about it. Check is cleared. Check's all cleared. Right. You guys, all right, this might be a little uncomfortable. I'm not sure, but you guys were paired up with a gentleman for a little while in your corner. Um, some people have their certain opinions about this, but uh, Mickey Biggs. Let's talk a little bit about Mickey. And uh, he seems to have disappeared. He came back for a brief moment and then pretty much off the face of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I know about just as much as you guys do with Mickey Biggs. Um, right. He he showed up. He walked out with me. Good guy. Uh, good dude. And uh, I think it's, again, anyone who walks out with me, and no disrespect to anyone, they, they will not be noticed. They will be in the shadow. You know, I'm going to have the spotlight. So I think Mickey Biggs might be looking at other options for himself as far as uh, who to manage just because he knew that whenever I walk out there and I'm performing, all eyes are on me. Not a single person is looking in the side, at the side, who's my manager, who's this, who's that. So as far as Mickey Biggs goes, while he was with me, it was good. I think he's going off to other things now because I haven't seen him or heard from him in a while. So that's all that. 
Do you think he was just trying to get a little bit of the shine, a little bit of the money because he was with you? Maybe. That's a really good point. That's a really good point you made. And I missed that at first. I think that's exactly what it is. And at this point in my career, even from the very start, I've noticed that people want to jump on the bandwagon and be all buddy, buddy with me. Cause they know I have simply everything needed to be a professional wrestler. And Mickey Biggs just realized that he looked at the locker room. He looked backstage and said, okay, Greg Baylor, you're that guy. You're literally him. You're the tallest, the youngest, the best looking, the best in shape, the best performer. There's no one that could lace your boots. And he knew that. So he wanted to uh, get a little piece of the pie. So you could say. Yeah. Unsuccessfully though. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're probably one of the brightest up and comers. So he was probably, like you said, jumping on the bandwagon, try to put a little extra in his pockets and That's right. That's all. maybe not work out. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly it. All right, let's see. You've had some really great matches since you've uh, you, you've been here in uh, in Paradise Alley. We're gonna move on. What's Can you say that? that again? Can you say that again? You've I've had, had some really great matches. One more time, please, please. One really more great. Time. You have had some really great matches please. since your your time, and you've one more time. I promise that's it. One more time. Let's hear it. Right. Come on. You, gorgeous Greg Baylor, have had some really great matches since. Your time here in the business, you've uh, only been here for been in the business what about two years, correct? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I've been working matches on shows for about a year and a half, but I've been training for about two years. Yeah, yep. And you know, you've um, you've expanded outside of your home promotion, which is Paradise Alley, which uh, yeah. you've met some really great talent in there. I'm going to go over a couple of those names here. You can give me your opinions on them, and we can move on to uh, some other stuff, okay? You had a, uh, quite an impressive match with a legendary uh, wrestler from the New Haven area, Bloodsaw. Yeah, Bloodsaw, he, he's interesting. He, Bloodsaw is, first of all, a very huge man, and he moves as fast as the speed of light. And that can be intimidating for a lot of people that need to go up against him. Just not me. Just not me. Because I, I, I see and envision and find the loopholes in wrestling. So when I roll out the ring, people say, oh, you're a chick and get back in there. You think I'm just being a scaredy cat, but really I'm just analyzing and thinking ahead of time of what I want to do. And they boo me. The fans boo me, but really they should be cheering me because the fact that I can think ahead. I can think on the spot and say, okay, he just beat me up for a little bit. What can I do to beat him up? And I take my time and what do I do? I get back in the ring and I do what I say I'm going to do. I beat him up. But as far as Bloodsaw goes, we just had a match. It was a 20-minute time limit and it ended before those 20. It ended after the 20 minutes. And I did tap out but it was after the bell rang. It was after the 20 minutes ended. So technically, I didn't lose. And a lot, of count. Upset. Yeah, a lot of fans were upset with that, saying, oh, I, I lost, I lost, I tapped out. Guess what? I technically didn't lose because I tapped out after the bell. So that's that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's rules for a reason, and the, the bell is the beginning and the end. Anything that happens before or after does not count. That's right. That's right. Tell me about working with RJ Rude, who was a very popular uh, wrestler from the Northeast and uh, Paradise Alley original. Uh, he comes out of the school there. And uh, he was very, uh, you know, he was away for a while from Paradise Alley. And they came back, I think, it was the last year, the year before. So, and you worked a match with him. Yeah, I, I wrestled RJ Rude right after actually coming off of a broken, a broken leg. I believe that was my first match back after I okay. saw a broken leg injury and I was ready for it. I definitely was. I ended up losing that match. I don't like making excuses, but I will say the atmosphere and the fans constantly yapping in my ear that can throw me off sometimes. It really can. And I think if, the PAPW fans in that situation were a little more well-rounded, better dressed people with a lot more going for themselves. I would respect them more and feel for them. But when I walk out the curtain and I see a bunch of homeless, 
ugly fat slobs, it, I just I'm bamboozled. I'm bamboozled. Okay. And it's not your people, thing. You're not used to being around these kind of people. I'm really not, and it got to my head. But that's something I need to work on. I need to look past the uh, the bums in this world and just keep doing my thing. You have a victory over uh, somebody that's been around a very long time, going on uh, reaching his uh, almost 25 years. He's a couple of years away. Bull Dread, of course, Mickey Biggs joined you in that match. Uh, I think that was the final time, and this one uh, was for Type One to None. Your feet were on the ropes, correct? Well, well, I don't know about that. Look, no. the wrestling ring is designed a certain way. Right. There's ropes for a reason. Can I just... I'm using my resources. They say, oh, I cheat. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm just smart. I'm using what I have. I'm using my resources. That's about the best thing you can do. Yet they still boo me. But I don't blame them for booing me because none of those wrestling fans are college edu educated. So they don't get it. But as far as that goes, I mean, let me off the hook there. I don't think it's too big of a deal. I think I beat them fair and square. Well, what about working with someone at, uh, on a dreads level? Uh, you know, with his experience and his years in the ring? Yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was excited for it. I was. I'll give Bulldrid credit. I think he's done so much for this business, especially in the independent wrestling circuit around this area and being able to wrestle him and beat him. It was a pleasure. It really was. It proved everything I've been preaching since day one, that I am the future of professional wrestling. And that's why I was so happy with that match because after all those people saw me beat him, a veteran, 25 year veteran, that has been around forever, done major things in this, in this business, beating him, it really shows who I am. And now, no matter how bad the fans want, they can't knock that. They can't. They cannot say I'm bad. They can't say, oh, I suck. Oh, boo. Because I proved myself. That's right. You're right. Uh, you took on the Uptown Boys, which is Matt Awesome and Jared Diaz in a match. I'm trying to remember. Was that the, was Fly Nine your partner there? I'm trying to. I don't didn't put that part in my notes for some reason. Who it your was, partner was. It was Fly Nine. Yeah. 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 Noriega and myself took on took on the Uptown Boys, yeah. Just that before was, your greeting, this, or before his, you know, before you guys, uh, you're falling out there? Yeah, we were still cool at the time, I yeah. think. Uh, yeah, I remember that match. Line 9 Noriega kind of, um, kind of got in the way, even when he wasn't being super greedy. Uh, well, I think if it was just me versus them two, I think we would have won. But yeah, well. That's a lot. You have a lot of confidence in yourself. I mean, how can you not? How can you not when you have everything I have? It's it's hard not to be confident when you're this good, but that's another story. But yeah. flying by, I appreciated the time I had with him, but it was obvious that he, again, was just riding the bandwagon, trying to get a little piece of the pie, and he kind of just got in my way. All right, we're going to be moving on in a second, but I want to talk about you captured the King of Paradise, which is the uh, one of the most prestigious you know it, it's this your first uh, i guess we could refer to it as a title it is a you know you wore it's basically like a trophy or a you know a uh yeah. it's not a belt but you know what i mean uh, you wore a, won a tournament to capture this and uh i'm not sure how you feel about the the winning the king of paradise do you uh go ahead i yeah so i'm gonna key on to what you just said you said one of the most prestigious things you can win Mm -hmm. It was not the most prestigious thing you could win no. until I won it. Because now that Greg Baylor's the king of paradise, now everyone wants to be the king of paradise next year and years on. Because that is something Greg Baylor's done. Something he's done, and now everyone wants it again. Piece of the pie. They want to be able to say, oh, I did what Greg Baylor did. The only problem is no one will wear that robe and crown as good as I did when I came out and fought uh, Bull Dread. Because no one will have as good of a run as I did in that tournament. Match after match, pin after pin. I was flawless. I was absolutely flawless. With that elbow drop coming off the top rope to finish it off, picture perfect. So that that was that was a good a good good step in the right direction for me. Uh, a few big wins. There were some people and that's all there is to it. King of Paradise. 
Do you have any other titles? Do you have any other titles that you're uh, looking forward to getting your hands on anytime soon, anywhere? I think I think everyone wants to to win titles. I think it'd be fools to say I didn't care. I do care because having more gold to look at in my bedroom, in my in my backyard, chilling by the pool with belts around yep. my waist, it'd be amazing. It would. Yeah. As far as where, well, I'm doing huge things at Northeast Wrestling right now. And yeah. getting win after win, I'm looking pretty good there. So if I can keep doing my thing, keep rolling, then I would love to get a title there. But that's all on me and how much work I put in. Uh, but as far as that goes, maybe a couple, maybe the world title at PAPW. I'd love to have that. I've always had my eyes on that. And uh, yeah. That's that. You might uh, be, be uh, I mean, you've, um, what's your opinion on being in uh, Northeast wrestling currently? Uh, that's one of the bigger indies that's in the Northeast, uh, Northeastern part of the United States, obviously. And they've been around for 25 or more years by now. And they've had some of the biggest names in professional wrestling come through there. And obviously you've been on some of these shows and you've been making your mark there. Tell me about uh, working there. Yeah, uh, it's great to be there because you're in a locker room with guys, big names, who have wrestled at Madison Square Garden in Mexico City, all these places, former WWE, AEW. You're around guys that you can just learn so much from. And just being in that locker room alone, I get better just, just because of they're there. And I learned so much talking to them. And – the bigger the stage, the bigger the spotlight, I find the better I do. Because if I'm going to be honest, given that, like you said earlier, it's probably the biggest independent promotion in maybe even the world, definitely in the Northeast. And uh, I think it's fitting that I'm there and that I'm making my mark there because of the star that I am. But yeah, uh, it's it's a good place to be. I think a lot of people want to be there and not a lot of people can be there. So because I have the gift that I'm there, I'm going to do my thing there. Like you said, and I'm not trying to sound ridiculous or anything like, but like you said, not a lot of people can be there, right? Because they don't take just anybody. That's you right. Know I mean, they take the best of the best that's out there in the, in the uh, independent scene. They don't hire just uh, anybody to come out there. So it's quite impressive. If you get in there, it's pretty impressive uh, on your wrestling career, on your resume. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah, that's a good place to be. And I'm there and everyone wants I'm where everyone wants to be. And uh, I think that bothers some people and some people don't like me for that. But my mind is so set straight. I just keep going forward. Now, you said that it, it bothers some people. Who, do you have anybody in mind when you because you, you've said that a couple times here? Is there anybody uh, that you're that you're pointing at here with that? No one specific. No one specific. No. The jealousy exists. Yeah. And sense it. Um, no one specific. I'm cool with everyone. I like to be cool with everyone. But, um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, let's see. You've also worked for Coliseum Pro Wrestling, which is, uh, you know, they run shows out in West Haven. I think they ran one in Bridgeport. Uh, tell me about working with them. Not too impressed. Hmm. Did you freeze? No, I didn't freeze. No? No? Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking before I speak. Okay. I'm that from a very young age. I got to think before I act. Make sure. No. Uh, look, it's another promotion where Greg Baylor can go and do his thing, win matches, be the star he is. So I'm glad it's there. But I did my thing there. Maybe I'll go back in the future. As of right now, I'm not there this next show, February 11th. Uh, mm -hmm. If they need me, they'll contact me, but I'm not going to okay. be with them. All right. You've also debuted for uh, Bay State Championship Wrestling in Springfield, Mass. I was there. Um, uh, you took on Jiggy Sosa, which, you know, another great competitor out of the Northeast uh, and from that area. And tell me about your match with Jiggy. Yeah, G Jiggy, Jiggy Sosa – He's he's good. He'd take you by surprise. I think he 
really sums up the uh, saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Because he looks like he sells drugs on the street corner, if I'm going to be honest. Wow. But he is very talented. He really is. And I'll I'll give him credit. I'm, I don't do this often, but wrestling him, he did get the better of me. He did beat me. And usually I'm not super thrilled about that. But I'll say he, he just didn't quit. And I think Jiggy has a good future ahead of him. Well, uh, what else do you have going on here that that we uh, in in the north or in the next couple of weeks, coming months, uh, years? You already said that every your your every gold piece of gold is on your horizon that you're looking at. So you're just I'm looking to capture gold. I'm going for everything. I'm going going in, going hard, full head of steam. Yeah, stop me. Just all gas, no brakes. I've been doing a I've been doing a lot with um, WFA Wrestling Federation of America. Tell me is, about that, yeah, because I've uh, I've just recently discovered that. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, great promotion. Production yeah. value is amazing. Uh, the way they showcase everything, it's great. Uh, I'm again all around a lot of good people. There's people in the back that can really help you out a lot critique things you do, make you better, and it's a definitely a good place to be. Uh, my next show there is February 19th. I got to double check where it is. It's usually either in New Hampshire or Massachusetts, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a good place to be. Okay. All right. Anything else that you have coming up that you want to uh, push out there? You mentioned Northeast, I think, before we went on air. Northeast, yeah, uh, February 18th. February Northeast. 18th. I'm wrestling Hunter Parka. Well, well, tell me about your opinion about Hunter because, you know, there was a, you've, uh, there's been times you've teamed with him in the uh, former Battle Academy, which is no more. So, you know, now you guys are going to be facing each other. Yeah, it's – I'd be lying to you if I said I hated him because I okay. don't. I think Hunter has – I think Hunter is similar to me in the sense that he has some qualities that not everyone else does. He has size, strength, height, which is something not a lot of independent wrestlers have. And he, I, I've been watching a lot of film on him to, to prepare myself. So that way, February 18th is easy for me. But I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm going to be training hard for it because I think Hunter is a great talent and – I think he also, like me, has a big future ahead of him. So I'm going to do my best, but he's he's no joke. Just recently saw a match of yours um, in Northeast against another former Battle Academy member. I just watched it on the High Spots Network, which was uh, Lorenzo Vendetta, which I thought was a tremendous match. So Thank you. Speak. Well, yeah, it was very good. I mean, I like to see – you know, I watch um, – I watch a lot of wrestling, obviously. Everybody knows that I watch a ton of wrestling, especially stuff that's out of New England and the Northeast. So a lot of the guys, especially if there's people I know, such as yourself and, you know, guys out of uh, a certain promotion that I've, you know, somewhat befriended, I will go out of my way to watch their matches and other promotions and stuff like that. So it was very good to see you and Lorenzo doing that uh, that match. I thought it was very good. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought it was good too, mainly because, you know, Greg Baylor got the win as he, as you know, which was not a surprise to anyone. At least it shouldn't have been because just the, the size of me, everything I do, everything all around. Uh, I was able to really, again, showcase what I've been preaching since day one, that I am the future. That was a big win for me. Lorenzo Vendetta is a great competitor. Uh, I definitely don't think it's the end of Lorenzo Vendetta, but it's uh, definitely the beginning for Greg Baylor. A lot, a lot coming ahead of me. Is there anybody in Northeast that you might have your eye on? Maybe a staple of uh, Northeast wrestling, maybe such as the legendary Ron Zombie or Wrecking Ball Ligurski or anybody such as that? I want whoever's got the belt. Okay. Because I want the belt. Any belt and all belts. But that's the obvious answer. That's the low-hanging fruit. Oh, I just want to go for the guy who's got the belt. Obviously, anyone would say that. But to be more specific, I would like to wrestle Flip Gordon. 
All All right. right. Flipgorn. I think that would be a very good match. I know it would. I know know it would. I'd like every time I see him, uh, whether in Northeast, and I know he's done appearances for the NWA and such, uh, in Ring of Honor, obviously. He's been, uh, he's put on some really great matches. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. I want to thank you for coming on. Is there anything else you want to close up with before, uh, before we get out of here? Point people towards your socials or whatnot? Yeah. Go follow me on all the socials. Greg Baylor. You'll find it there. And uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So give me a follow there. You uh, won't be disappointed. But that's all I got. Thank you for having me on. Thank you very much. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Had a great time.